Hey everyone, welcome to this weekly Sidereal Astrology Forecast for the week of September 16th to the 22nd of 2024. All right, so this week we have a lot going on astrologically. I would say the simplest way to put it is that we do have a lunar eclipse on Tuesday and Wednesday. And so this is definitely an important time of the year now coming into eclipse season. Uh, we're going to have the solar eclipse, of course, as the next new moon. But here, as a sort of prelude to that, I think it's great to do a status check with the Piscean qualities of life. The lunar eclipse conjunct the North Node in Pisces is all about, has been really about already with the North Node here, following our soul and doing things that are better for our soul health, mental health, spiritual health, things that are soul fulfilling for us in life. So doing a status check with this. Um, this will be double emphasized with a conjunction up to Neptune, and it's of, uh, actually forming a kite with Pluto and Uranus as well. So along with this, of course, the Sun will then be forming aspects with all these planets associated with the lunar eclipse we'll talk about in detail, and that's happening throughout the week. But uh, also this week, we have Mercury in aspect. Uh, Mercury is going to be opposite Saturn on around Wednesday, doing a little bit of a status check also with maybe some of the things regarding responsibility, patience, and discipline that we've put into maybe the past six months in our life. And uh, over the weekend, we then have Mercury squaring Jupiter, which can give us a little bit of a open mind, but good to ground that. Any types of inspirations or open-mindedness, uh, really good to ground. And uh, Mercury will then start to go into Virgo late on Sunday, uh, which adds to a little bit of the more improvement and refinement energies that we've already got going on with the sun now officially in Virgo as well. And then the week sort of ends here with Venus squaring Pluto, maybe some deep things coming up with our values and relationships that can be worked on as well. So all in all, very powerful week. So let's go and take a look at all of this here in more detail when we return. Alrighty, so here is the sky for this week. We're going to look at this for each day of the week, starting first with Monday, September 16th. And as you can see here, we are using the visible sky on this channel. It's very different from mainstream astrology. You will notice a lot of the sign placements are different. So if you hear something like the, um, the, the sun just shifting into Virgo, but you thought maybe the sun's already been in Virgo for some time, definitely check out that link down below on using the visible sky and how it's different from mainstream astrology. All right, so this week, um, a lot going on. Again, simply put, I would say it's really centered around this lunar eclipse. A lot of the aspects that you're seeing here, which we're going to go over in detail, are really just the aspects associated with the lunar eclipse, particularly the ones involving the sun here, as you can see. Um, so lunar eclipse will be late Tuesday, early Wednesday for most of us. It will be at 2244 Eastern time of the Americas. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and, and talk about it. So coming into the week, we've got the sun who has now recently entered Virgo. So the focus for the next really couple months is on improvement and refinement, okay? So the sun is all about where we're focused right now and it's, it's suggesting that it's the time of the year to be focused on improvement and refinement. This is of course great for personal development, things like health, diet, routines, uh, but really our work and service as well, you know, things we can improve within ourselves with our work and uh, our service. Now Venus has already been here, so this has already been what we've been hopefully enjoying or can be enjoying. Venus isn't very well placed here, but um, anything that's been about enjoying the refining, improving, improving, getting into the details of things is great. This is also how we can be connecting with our relationships as well. Mercury is going to be finishing Leo here this week, shifting into Virgo very late on Sunday. And so here, it's still good to be thinking in a way that's maybe creative and letting that creative mind wander a little bit and maybe expressing ourselves still very much can be great uh, with Mercury and expressive Leo. Mars is well set in Gemini now. So when it comes to perhaps the more social or interactive energies of life, there is a lot of fire going on there. It's great to be direct with our communications right now and maybe taking a little bit of initiative to exchange with others, uh, whether it's communication or business or trade or learning or whatever it is, even learning within ourselves. If there's anything that you do want to put some of that fiery Mars energy into learning or gaining information, 
um, it's also great for that. So definitely I would say the mutable energies are the ones that are activated right now. Uh, the Gemini and Virgo energies in particular. Mutable energies are about creating more flexibility in our life. And Virgo does it by creating that structure that creates flexibility. You know, routines, habits, these things can free us up to have more freedom in our life, actually. And um, of course, Gemini being interested, curious, and willing to exchange gives us more flexibility. So all in all, I think that's a great way of working with it, of course, because the full moon will be in Pisces, the other uh, one of the other mutable signs here. Um, and Pisces remind, reminds us that flexibility can be activated by going with the flow a little bit. Again, following our soul. So let's go and talk about that because on uh, Monday, the moon will be in Aquarius. So uh, Monday, maybe some themes around some of that forward thinking energy, some of that maybe collective energy as well. But that's really setting a backdrop to the strongest energy. The strongest energy will be the lunar eclipse and we'll likely start to feel that as really as early as now when you're watching this, if you're watching this on Sunday, but uh, even throughout Monday and into Tuesday, you know, we will definitely be feeling, I think, that lunar eclipse in Pisces. <clears throat> so lunar eclipse in Pisces conjunct the North Node and Neptune, who's been in Pisces already these past couple years, few years. And so lunar eclipse is a full moon and it's about doing a status check for really our life path. OK, now the North Node part of the life path is the future life path. And so it's already been really good for about a year now to be setting intentions to follow our path when it comes to our soul, right? To do things in life and really with the North Node to take initiative, be proactive with things in life that is gonna lead to more soul fulfillment. <clears throat> and again, it's good for our mental health and our spiritual health as well. So this is the new energy that's been great to develop. And now with the other, now lunar eclipse here, it's a status check. How has this been going on? And how can we further develop it for at least the next two weeks for the remainder of the lunar month? But I would say definitely for the next six months, which is roughly about the amount of time the North Node's going to be finishing uh, in Pisces here. So intentions for the next six months. How can we cultivate more soul fulfillment in our life? Do things that are more soul fulfilling? Have a relationship with life where we're willing to let go of a little bit of control and um, you know, flow with things a little bit. So going into the ethers, going into the emotional world, into the spiritual world, anything centered around this is great. Now, of course, with all full moon, all full moons, in this case, the lunar eclipse, it's important to balance it out with the sun's energy, which is again a Virgo. So this is the axis that deals with control and not control. So still focusing on what we do have control, control over, that's Virgo, again, ourselves, routines, habits, personal development, things like that, while also maintaining, uh, or let's say relinquishing control over what's outside of our control, right? What's up to life? What do we not have control over? And what can we go with the flow with a little bit more? Have a little bit more faith and trust in the universal or divine process of things, okay? So I would say this is the simplest way of describing what the lunar eclipse is helping us do collectively. Now, with the lunar eclipse, it is going to be forming a kite with uh, Uranus and Pluto, which is uh, the kite. This part of the kite is the trine formation. So it's nice to see that the outer planets are supporting these shifts and changes we could be making with our life path. Now, Uranus is helping us do it in a way that challenges the status quo. So I think anything that's innovative, forward thinking, adaptive um, is really good. If there's anything you've been wanting to change with maybe your inner or outer resources in life, things like your self-worth, self-value, inner strength, but external things like maybe money, resources, or working with nature in some way. This uh, innovation with the resources of life and the natural energies of life um, has been already great. And anything that is on that level, I think is going to be supportive with this lunar eclipse. The other one is Pluto entering Capricorn. Pluto is retrograde right now. It's going to dip closer back into Capricorn as we get into the later part of the year. But Pluto and Capricorn recently has been helping us really make structural changes to our life energy, really getting into the bedrock of what we've built our life 
upon up to this point and now being willing to restructure. So anything that's on this level, again, recent, that's been restructuring, also quite supportive, but any intention to continue or really still still very new, so anything new as well, that is about restructuring the, the fundamentals of our life, the fundaments of our life, the substratum of our life uh, is really good here and being willing to make those changes again, very supportive. All right, so that is the lunar eclipse, having that supportive energy with uh, the outer planets is uh, fantastic. All right, so that's gonna be late Tuesday, early Wednesday uh, for most of us, but again, really feeling it this whole bulk of the early part of the week. Now, as we do get into Wednesday, of course, the moon will still be in Pisces here. The moon will be in Pisces all the way until Friday with that watery energy, receptivity, relinquishing control. Um, but Mercury will be opposite Saturn, which is also another type of status check. And this kind of status check has to do with maybe where we've been working hard or at least having to be patient with things the past six months. And um, this is gonna be the first opposition with Saturn. Of course, then the sun will do this um, here a little bit later uh, in about a month. And, um, and then of course, uh, eventually Mars. But uh, here with, um, or excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. This is actually already, um, this has already been going on. I apologize, I was thinking of Venus here. So we've already been doing this status check with Saturn, which is a status check on what has been taking time in our life and what we need to have patience with. So it is really the final status check with the fast movers here. And so anything else that's about seeing the long road, where we've been putting in time, patience, perseverance, where we can maybe make one or two other shifts with that perseverance, patience, and discipline, I think is fantastic. And all in all, I think with the last of the fast movers, this is the final sort of um, shifts and changes that I think are on that level in regards to where we have been putting in that patience and perhaps responsibility with things. All right, but a little bit of status check there, maybe some shifts and changes with some of those more grounding things in life can be great around Wednesday. All right, so, so again, uh, uh, lunar eclipse there activated now. Here is where we start to get to some of the um, the activations of the kite, okay? So the sun will now start to form those trines we talked about. So sun trining Uranus on Thursday, really good for a bit of adaptability, flexibility, changing the routine a little bit, getting outside of our comfort zone, and experimenting all in all. So there's a support to do it, but of course being an outer planet, it's always good to challenge ourselves to do it anyways, because outer planets are a little bit difficult to work with. I mean, it's not always easy to follow our excitement and induce change and experiment with things, but we definitely do have the support to do it. So Thursday here, anything that all, that is on that level, really challenging our own status quo, really helping facilitate these shifts and changes with the life path from the lunar eclipse. Now, once we do get into this Friday time, uh, the uh, moon will shift into Aries. So the moon will be in Aries both Friday and Saturday. This is where we'll likely notice a little more of a support to implement the lunar eclipse energy as we'll be in the disseminating phase of the lunar month, which is a little more supportive, a little bit easier to start to implement things. But um, yeah, with this one here, with Aries, it could be a good couple days for action and initiative, okay? So Friday, Saturday, a uh, little bit of proactivity, initiative in our life is great. I think it's a great week for that anyways, since we are in this heightened energy of the lunar month with the full moon, and the North Node really speaks to these more proactive and initiating kinds of energies. But um, yeah, maybe particularly Friday and Saturday themes around initiative. Now, um, along with this, this is the, um, the Neptune part of the lunar eclipse, the sun opposite Neptune, maybe the themes around now again, starting to incorporate that receptivity, starting to incorporate a little bit more of that peace and spiritual well-being in our life, probably getting more so activated as we go through the second half of the week, in this case with the sun opposite Neptune. And I'll go ahead and jump, jump forward here for the weekend. The sun trining Pluto gives us the support from that structural changes we were talking about. So being willing to make those transformations and changes. Again, what we're seeing here is an implementation and another step in the right direction regarding that full moon energy. All right, so that's definitely the most important stuff. A couple things here about the weekend that I wanna mention. Uh, Mercury will be squaring Jupiter 
here on Saturday. Maybe a bit of an open mind, but we want to make sure that's grounded. Uh, Mercury and Jupiter can give us a bit of expansive mind, thinking big, maybe seeing some possibilities and potentials. Um, but maybe on the other extreme, not so much, because of course, when the pendulum swings one way, it does swing the other. So being aware that there are opportunities, but they will likely take action and initiative on our part. And again, implementation uh, is really the key with these squares. And then Venus squaring Pluto on Sunday. Now, Sunday, the moon will be in Taurus. So there will be some themes about incorporating a little bit of this more Earth energy, a bit of groundedness and resourcefulness. And uh, this is double emphasized by the fact that by this point, by Sunday, Mercury will be getting closer to Virgo than Leo. So starting to enter Virgo. And then here's where we have, of course, now all of the real fast moving planets in Virgo now. So thinking a little bit more in terms of improvement and refinement, Virgo being an Earth energy, how can we create structure with things? But here with being willing to um, you know, have structure to give us more of that flexibility again in life, routines, habits, uh, working on ourselves, things of this nature. But anyways, Venus uh, squaring Pluto. Venus rules values and it rules relationships. And so here there can be some deep stuff coming up here. Um, good to work on it constructively, seeing the deeper values of life. Typically, typically with Venus square Pluto, we tend to be a bit more guarded or a bit more boundaried uh, in relationships, but uh, being willing to dive deep with those that we trust, with those that we've built healthy depth with and trust with. Um, but, um, you know, in, in either case, being willing to dive deep within ourselves and really see what we really value about the deeper world and deeper life in general, what really matters at the end of the day in life. So being willing to get a little bit at least intimate and vulnerable with ourselves and uh, in this way, really connecting the deeper values of things. And then as a result of this, we're likely then a little bit more open to sharing deeply in those closer relationships. And um, then at the same time, though, then very keenly aware of where we do need to perhaps set some boundaries. Um, in uh, other situations where depth is not appropriate. So find, finding that balance here between depth and boundary and uh, incorporating that around Sunday. All right, everyone, so that is a mouthful. Let me go ahead and just simplify all of this so that it is hopefully nice and clean here. So really the lunar eclipse, late Tuesday, early Wednesday for most of us. It is in Pisces. Pisces is the constellation of finding more peace in life, doing what's soul fulfilling to us. And this has been a theme that's already been in development. And so this is really just about doing another status check with this and starting to make some shifts and changes to further implement more peace and receptivity in our life in general. A lot of the aspects that you're seeing this week is really just about implementing that. And I would say the second half of the week is really about that implementation, okay? We don't really need to get into the Mercury aspects or the Venus aspects, okay, in terms of the major energy of the week, it'll definitely be the lunar eclipse centered around this. Um, what I will say along with this though, is that while it is good to be receptive, it is of course to be, you know, it's very important to also be focused on what we do have control over in life. And here with now all the fast movers getting into Virgo, it's really about saying that yes, there are things we have control over. It's really ourselves and our immediate environment. And uh, by you know cultivating this life uh, can help balance it. But but one thing I want to add about this Virgo energy is because it's involving the South Node, and, and we'll come to a main theme with this in two weeks when we have the uh, solar eclipse. But um, right now, perhaps letting the Virgo energies happen a little bit more automatically. I'm not trying to force them too much because the South Node is actually about being more yin about it. So it's a great time with this lunar eclipse to be more yang about spiritual health, soul health, as I said, more proactive with that, implementing that, um, and more yin, which means a little bit more of letting life take control in regards to the kind of busy energy of Virgo, okay? So the doing, the improvement, the refinement, let that happen more automatically, right? Just kind of unconsciously or automatically as a result of that, okay? Um, but all in all, I think it's a supportive lunar eclipse, even though lunar eclipses are quite transformative. And again, we've got the support from Uranus helping us induce change. So this week being open to getting outside of our comfort zone, innovation, thinking outside the box, and Pluto being willing to, to transform things in our life fundamentally. All right, so everyone have a fantastic week, have a fantastic lunar eclipse. So there will be a live stream uh, going on here every week now following the uh, weekly forecast. So that's gonna be maybe just a couple hours after you watch this, but uh, 
we'll get more into a rhythm of this every week. But anyways, do definitely stay tuned for the live stream if you wanna ask questions, you wanna dive a little bit deeper into the weekly energy and join the community, which is always great. So have a great week, everyone, and I'll see you all next time for the next Astrology Forecast. Take care.